Welcome to the total joint class presentation for patients who will be undergoing a total hip or a total knee replacement. Hopefully we'll answer many questions that you have. And if you continue to have questions, you can email or call me. When you have a total hip or a total knee replacement at St. Mary's, you will be seen for physical therapy and occupational therapy, ideally the day of your surgery. Sometimes if the surgery is in the afternoon and goes late, the PT or OT will not happen until the next day. But most of the time, the expectation is that you will have the knee or hip replacement and you will go home that day after having an evaluation by physical therapy and occupational therapy. What does physical therapy do? We help patients who have conditions that limit their strength, range of motion, balance, and ability to move, especially after a hip or a knee replacement. We want to show them how to exercise and move safely with a walker, crutch, cane, rarely a wheelchair if appropriate, and make sure they are safe and independent with their movements. We will also show you some exercises to do. So as I stated, you'll be seen for an evaluation and you and the therapist will develop a treatment plan. Before you leave the hospital, we need to make sure you can stand up, get out of a chair, walk, and if you have to, go up and down stairs. And we want to make sure you're doing your exercises. This is very important. After a hip or knee replacement, movement is good. You need to move. I've been physical therapist for 28 years. The patients that do well, really well, move immediately. Your joint is strong and you can bear weight on it and move. If there are any extenuating circumstances, which is rare, your surgeon will be specific and tell you limitations. But unless you are told otherwise, you can move and walk immediately. Again, initially with somebody to make sure you're safe. So we want to make sure that you are independent to walk the distance you need to walk wherever you live with a walker or crutches. We want to make sure you know your home program because we want you to start your home program immediately. We want you to be able to do stairs safely with very little help and make sure your transfer is getting in and out of bed, in and out of a chair, in and out of a car are safe and independent. Ideally, whoever is going home with you will be at the physical therapy evaluation. And this is an important point for planning. Try to have someone you live with or if you live alone, somebody who will be checking on you present for the physical therapy and occupational therapy evaluations. If you have a hip replacement, there are no precautions. This is an anterior approach that Dr. Kobolenko does, which means he accesses the joint from the front of your body. I think one of the advantages of an anterior approach is you don't have to worry about precautions. Some of you may have had a posterior approach and those patients could not do certain movements. To not have precautions is really, really nice. So again, I want to emphasize, after hip replacement with Dr. Kovalenko, there are no precautions. You don't need to worry about moving the wrong way. With your exercises, we want you to do 10 to 15 reps of each exercises twice a day. It's good to do both legs. And these exercises should stretch things that are tight and be a strain for muscles that are weak, 
but they should not cause extreme pain. Your physical therapist will help you decide if an exercise is appropriate or not. After going home, you will most likely have home health physical therapy who can also help you with the exercises. Typically, after you're done with home health physical therapy, you will go to outpatient physical therapy. And that's where I work at St. Mary's on Gracelawn Avenue with physical therapists and physical therapist assistants. This is important, especially if you have a knee replacement. You do not want to sleep with a pillow under your knee. It is very comfortable to have a pillow under your knee, but when that knee is in a bent position all night, the back of the knee gets stiff and it is difficult to straighten your knee. So do not sleep with a pillow under your knee on your back. You can sleep with a pillow between your knees on your side, that is fine. Ice is your friend. It will help with pain control and swelling. So try to ice 15 minutes at least three times a day. Do your exercises. We talked about that. It's very important that you move. The more you move, the better you will feel. Weight bearing as tolerated. That means you can put as much weight on your knee or your hip as you feel comfortable with. You will still have crutches or a walker, but you can weight bear as much as you're comfortable with. It is much better to walk in a normal heel to toe manner than to limp without a cane or a crutch. So I'd rather have you hit with your heel, your knee should be straight at heel strike, and you should roll off your toes at toe off with a crutch or a cane than walk with a limp without a cane. And again, there are no range of motion limits unless otherwise advised. These three exercises are really for edema control, and these can be done hourly. Ankle pumps, which is simply pulling your foot up and down as far as you can. Quad sets, which is tightening your thigh and relaxing your thigh. And gluteal sets, which is tightening your butt and releasing your butt. Ten times an hour is ideal. The next exercises can be done two or three times a day. Leg raises, tighten your thigh first, lift your leg six to eight inches, and lower it slowly. Relax in between reps. Hip ab and adduction is simply sliding your leg side to side. Chair push-ups is similar to doing a dip when you're using your arms to help push yourself up. That is an arm strengthening exercise. Long arm quads is straightening your knee all the way, trying to get your quad or the muscle on the front of your leg engaged. And the knee stretch, that's sliding your foot under the chair as far as you can. That's particularly important for a knee replacement. If you have a walker, crutches, or loft strand crutches, you can bring that to the hospital with you. We'll make sure it is safe and it fits you correctly. You can have front-wheeled walkers, which only have two wheels on the front. You can have a standard walker, which does not have any wheels. Or you can have what's called the rollator, which has four wheels. And if you have that, we will show you how to use it correctly. If you don't have it, the hospital does have these that they will issue to you. It usually is covered by insurance, but it may not be. So if you have one of these devices and you like it, bring it to the hospital with you. Okay, this is much easier to show in person. But when you're walking with crutches, you want the involved leg and the crutches to hit the floor at the same time. Say it's the right knee again. Again, I would want to hit with the 
right heel, knee straight, roll off the toes, and the right heel and the cane or the crutch hit at the same time. Hit with the heel, roll off the toes. When you're using a walker, back up to the chair until you feel the back of your legs touching the chair. You don't want to plop and you don't want to have a distance between your legs and the chair. You should reach back and put your hands on the chair, which is stable. The walker is not a stable device. So back up until you feel the chair with your legs, reach back with your hands, and slowly sit. If your walker has brakes, make sure the brakes are locked. When you stand up, do not grab for the walker. A lot of people do this and the walker will move. Push off whatever you're sitting on, whether it's the bed or a chair. Stand up tall, then grab the walker. And if applicable, unlock the brakes of the walker. We assume your right knee is the surgical knee or your right hip. You're going to want to go forward with the walker in the right, hit with your heel, knee straight, and then roll off your toes. Okay, so you hit with your heel, roll off your toes, and you can just keep this rolling. This has wheels on the front and tennis balls on the back. Now, if it didn't have wheels on the front, you would pick it up. You'd pick it up, hit with your heel, roll off your toes. Now I'm on my left leg, pick it up. The walker and the heel hits at the same time. The walker, all four legs and the heel at the same time. So that's how you use a walker. When you're doing stairs, you want to lead with the good leg. Good goes to heaven. So the non-surgical leg goes up first. So in this picture, this gentleman would have a right, let's say, knee replacement. The left leg goes up first. And then the right leg, one at a time. Hopefully you have a railing at home that makes it much easier. So in this case, because the railing is more sturdy than the cane, he has the rail on his right side. Good goes to heaven. Lead with your good leg. When you're going downstairs, you're going to go first with your involved leg or your surgical leg. So good goes to heaven, bad goes to hell. So this person had a right knee replacement, let's say. They're going down with the right first, and then the left to the same step, just one step at a time. Let's say the right leg is involved. I want to lead with the good leg. So I'm going to come up with the left, and the right, and the crutch come together, because they always stay together. Lead with the good. Non-surgical, crutch and right together. Lead with the good, crutch and right together. Good goes to heaven. Okay, when you're going downstairs, you're going to go down with the surgical leg first. And the reason is because my left leg is doing all the work as the knee bends. So I go down with the surgical leg and the crutch at the same time. Bad goes to hell with the crutch. Surgical and crutch at the same time. Side stairs. You'll also be getting occupational therapy. Now, occupational therapists help patients become more independent with ADLs, activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, toileting, etc. They will show patients how to use their adaptive equipment and adjust or modify to make the activities easier. Things to consider before you have your joint replacement. Is it hard to get off the toilet now? If it's hard now, it will be hard, more hard, after the surgery. So you may want to consider a raised toilet seat. You may make these that fit right into your existing toilet versus a commode versus a safety frame over the existing toilet. You have grab bars in your shower. Again, if it's hard for you to stand up and take a shower now, it's going to be more difficult initially. So grab bars in your shower are a good idea. Do you have a shower seat? This takes away the balance component when you're taking a shower and is much safer.
If you have a shower seat, you will want a handheld shower head. Makes it much easier to, to wash yourself if you can maneuver the shower head. And home health will go over these things with you. It's ideal to have somebody stay with you for a few days. That's really ideal. If your bedroom is on the second floor, it's ideal to temporarily set up a bed on the first floor so you don't have to do the stairs. Make sure the railing is sturdy and it's a good idea to make sure there is no clutter in the hallways or on the stairs and make sure you have night lights. Approximately one quarter of all hospital admissions are related to a fall. So anything we can do to prevent a fall is crucial. Another tip is when you get out of bed, oftentimes there's a blood, blood pressure change which makes you dizzy. So make sure to sit up for a minute, make sure you're not dizzy, then stand for a minute, make sure you're not dizzy before you get up and go. So as I stated, you will have ideally the same day or maybe the next day an occupational therapy evaluation and you and the OT will develop a plan just like you did with the physical therapist. Sometimes PT and OT will see you at the same time. And again, it's ideal if, you're, if the person going home with you is present for that evaluation. If you stay overnight, you will have daily occupational therapy and physical therapy. Occupational therapy will focus on making sure you're independent with bathing, toileting, getting in and out of the tub or shower, getting off the toilet, training with your assistive devices, which we'll go over next, and education about discharge plans and equipment needs. Now, not all people can go home, so sometimes people would go to what's called the SNF, Skilled Nursing Facility, where you would have physical therapy and occupational therapy, and there would be nurses there to help you until you can go home. These are the special equipment that occupational therapy would use with you. This is simply a loop that you can hook around your foot and help to bend your knee. This is a shoehorn, which is very helpful. This is a sponge on a stick to help wash your back. This is a grabber to make things easier to pick up. This is called the sock aid, which is very interesting. You put your sock on it. You put your sock on it. And you can use the straps to pull that up over your ankle. And occupational therapy will go over these with you. This is just a picture of different uh, types of commode. The nice thing about this is this will extend over the, if you have a typical stand-up shower or a tub shower, this will go over the edge of the shower so you can sit on it and then slide yourself into the shower. What can you do after a joint replacement? Recovery takes three to six months. You, you cannot drive on pain medications such as oxycodone. So you need to be off the medications and you need clearance from your doctor before you can drive. Walking is good for you. We want you to walk. We want you to do stairs if you have stairs at home, but we want you to be safe. But remember, there are no limitations for weight bearing. You need clearance before you go back to work. That's going to depend on what type of work you do. Activities that are good is golf is usually six months, but check with the surgeon. Walking, stationary bicycling is excellent. Swimming, once your incision is clean and, and healed, is excellent, but your incision needs to be closed. Make sure you check with the doctor. Activities you should avoid, or at least be cleared by the surgeon. You're getting a joint replaced, so running, jumping, 
those things are going to cause your joints to wear out faster. These joints are very durable and they last usually 20 years. But if somebody is abusing them, they can wear out sooner. Also, depending on your weight, the heavier you are, the faster the joint replacements will wear out. So it's also a good idea to lower your BMI, your body mass index, if it is too high. I like to make sure my patients can kneel. I don't want them kneeling every day, but with the appropriate scar massage and exercises, sometimes you have to take a knee. So we don't want you kneeling every day, but training specifically with your therapist, if you could kneel before the surgery, we want you to be able to kneel after the surgery. You don't want to be doing high stress biking. So that's talking about standing up on your pedals and trying to sprint up a hill. Biking is very good, especially stationary bicycling. We just don't want you to try to race people. And things with high risk of injury like skiing, hockey, basketball, there's a chance you could fall and hurt your already replaced hip. That would not be ideal. But again, talk to Dr. Kovalenko about these goals prior to your surgery. So typically when I do this class in person, there are a lot of questions which come up which are really helpful. Again, if you have any questions, you can call me 753-3070 or you can email me pfecto1, the number one, at covh.org. Thank you, and I wish you good luck with your joint replacement.